Hello, I'm Joseph. I made a video on my two cents on Zig. I want to talk about memory allocation though, specifically. Um, I didn't really touch on to it too much in the video. And so in this instance, I'm just implementing a little, like, little string. I need a, I need a break from working on Zig and Windows. Um, so I'm on Mac OS right now. And I just wanted to do like a quick little string implementation since that's one of the things I brought up. Like you just don't have access to a really like a string feature. Uh, it's just all arrays, all down. And uh, here I have uh, a string implementation. You pass in the allocator uh, with the capacity, initial capacity that will reallocate as needed. Or if you need it to fit within the capacity, have things like a pinned fit that will not reallocate um, based on whatever the size that you sp originally specified. I do need to back up a little bit here. Um, allocator. So allocator is being passed in. Um, whenever you make a library in Zig, you want to allow them to pass in the allocator. And if you don't know what I'm talking about for an allocator, there is memory that is you know generated within your function that's called the stack, and then there's memory that is generated outside your function, which is called the heap. And whenever you need to pass that memory from one function to the other, you generally want to use the heap um, because the ownership of it if it's created on stack will be deleted um, that's the only representation of ownership in zig itself which you can return uh, a pointer to something on a stack and it will it'll let you do that it won't, it won't catch it uh and you'll get like a uh, uh segment faults so anyways the, the point of the allocator here is that you know on a stack you ha only have so much memory you can actually allocate um, meaning that if you go beyond maybe like a megabytes worth uh, of, of data you're going to get a stack overflow that's that's kind of where that came from if you need a lot of memory you need to use the heap and so there are a bunch of different allocators here this is my kind of first stick though is that every tutorial that i read used gpa didn't really explain it too much uh, gpa is kind of a safer way to allocate memory on the heap it will tell you when there are memory leaks however it will only tell you when there's memory leaks if you dnit if you do not dnit you will not get that information and thus the point of using gpa really does not help you at all um, this is something i also did not see in a lot of tutorials i read online denitting the gpa is almost a requirement now you can get the same type of effect in testing and you can use the test allocator here so in some of my tests i have like allocation and you don't need to dnit it will do that after the test but it will tell you the memory leaks here so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go ahead and uncomment this i'm also going to make a memory potential memory leak it's not in a memory leak technically because it's all still being cleaned up at the end of the function because it ends the program ends um, but i'm going to go ahead and run this and it runs just fine however if i go back and i actually enable the dnet and then run it it will go ahead and tell me i have a memory leak and it's saying hey you made memory here but you never cleaned it up it doesn't tell you where you need to clean it up at that's up to the programmer to go figure that out but it's nice to know that if you're using gpa and you're using it with dnet you're going to get that help while in runtime or when you're running it it's not at compile time the other part here uh, that I do have to bring up is defer. Um, now, you could run dnit at the very end of your function here. The problem is there are bail up mechanisms through try that is not really being caught anywhere here. So if you do not defer it, um, it will not always be called because defer will be called regardless of a successful or error-based event when you return your any error void here so this defer is something you have to learn it, it it's nice but then there's also error defer so error defer will only call when there is an error so when i go to my split feature here and i go into the implementation of it it will have an error defer and this error defer uh, is called whenever there's an error so i couldn't complete the function and so I have to do a cleanup myself because I may have gotten somewhere else down here and an error happened and I need to clean up all the uh, allocated memory I was working with in the first place through the allocator. So that's, that's really important to know. And then my only little thing about that was, I don't know, because I, I'm working procedurally right now, my brain's just thinking logically go down the list. Um, as it goes down, it's going to clean these things up. And um, in my split function, <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to go into this a little bit, but 
just to, to kind of put the point in here, in my split function, it requires the user to go clean up the memory because it gives them the memory. They are owning the memory that's generated from this function. But yeah, I was thinking, okay, well, yeah, I call split and it on defer. I want to clean up everything here and then I want to go ahead and then clean up the array. You know, that makes sense to me. And then I would go ahead and go run this and um, it would give me a segment fault. So I'm getting um, a segment fault here and I'm, I'm like, okay, why? So I open up LLDB and in LLDB, I get stuck here. I'm like, what? It's not available. Why is it not available? Oh, that's right. When you use defer and error defer, it happens in the order specified, but in reverse. So um, just doing that, you know, made that little fix. And then you know, obviously when I go and run it, uh, it's fine because it doesn't have any, did I, oh, I forgot to fix the allocation error here. So we're going to try that one more time and then it runs just fine. You don't get any segment faults or allocation errors. So I don't know. It's just like a lot of little nuance to this memory stuff that you have to watch out for. And every time you do anything with the allocator, it seems to can be like a foot gun effect. Um, you're kind of just out on your own figuring this stuff out um, with that. So <clears throat> that's that. The the other part was what I was already talking about, which is the ownership of memory and more specifically the behavior that you expected for some of these functions. So in Rust, we have things like lifetimes, we, we can embed behavior into our code uh, that makes it kind of just like safer to program with Rust in the first place. Zig really doesn't do any of that. In fact, the documentation around um, behavior for for this stuff, where is it at? Uh, the, it's like lifetimes. Okay, so we have, where did I go with that? Let's try this again. Lifetimes, there you go. As it says, uh, for example, documentation may say caller owns memory. So that's that's how in Zig you know that you own the memory or not is via reading the manual uh, or reading the function to know that you own the memory or not. The another little gotcha here for cleanup of memory and if you're going to do certain things with the allocator in functions. So for example, I could put my allocator destroy in my dnit as if one less thing to clean up a lot easier. But if the user is using an arena, this may cause a problem. And if you don't know what an arena is, uh, at least in Zig world for allocation, we have our allocator. If we're doing a bunch of different allocations in our functions and deallocations, it can get a little slow. So, but with an arena, um, that operation, happens very quickly and then you don't need to be calling d init all over the place you don't need all these do for d init's d allocation stuff because the arena can clean up at the very end you can just put like a defer arena d init at the end or whenever you create it and then at the end of the function it will do all those cleanups regardless because i know everything here i'm not i don't need to give out into any other function no external functions need to call this therefore i can use an arena has this cleanup and it'll be you know, for the most part, a lot faster if I was doing a lot of little operations uh, rather than a little bit. So that's that. The But the the ownership part is just like, yeah, every time you call split, not only do you need to, to de-init the array that are returned, you also need to go and de-init all the individual strings and deallocate the the strings that were buffered, allocated stuff. Um, that, that's all for you to control. Um, and by the way, this is, this is not de knitting the buffer inside the strings that is actually already present in there. I keep, I keep getting confused on this. Um, so I already have an allocator free there. So, uh, just, just uh, a little, a little bit of a point there because the string itself is created as a pointer or, or, uh, allocated as a, as a pointer here. I'm not sure why this is not showing the annotation of it, but technically this is a, this is a pointer. <coughs> okay. So all that said, that's what you should expect. Uh, I'm going to go into one little other aspect of memory, which is it has to do with like embedded in real time systems. Um, I, I've done this in Rust and Zig has the same issue with Rust uh, in that I don't know how big a function is in my binary. I don't know how much memory is being allocated within a specific function on the stack of the function. If you do embedded programming in C, you just document this stuff. Um, you do the same with Zig. So what I mean is here I have, uh, like it, you normally, you don't want to use an allocator in embedded systems. So if you do, you, pre you, you, you segment off a bit of memory that you, you'll never have access to on a stack and it makes it a lot harder to program against. 
uh, so you do um, uh, kind of compile time versions of this. So if I wanted to make another fixed string of you know 2048, I would do that, and it would uh, using the comp time, uh, it would go ahead and make a separate um, set of functions all implemented around this new byte length. Um, it, it just again using the comp time stuff here it's not very obvious on the size of any of these things and i'm just kind of like uh yeah okay it added you know three kilobytes to my my binary size um and then i don't know how much memory is being used in here offhand this goes into um whether or not you should be using the uh like comp time based I guess, uh, like, because like, what is this? Is this, is this U size or is this comp time int? Um, you, you don't know what, what size is comp time int. Um, so it gets a little bit harder for, for embedded programming, but it's no harder than really C or Rust is. Uh, I just wish because of how Zig is kind of like marketed, it can provide this to the user. I think that would be a lot better of a case uh, for that. And then the last thing I'll talk about is um, anytime you see like these at signs for this stuff, that's all comp time based. Uh, so if I wanted to do um, uh, like memory copy operations, uh, this actually I shouldn't be doing anymore. I could technically do um, at mem copy and then uh, because this is all comp time based now and not dynamic, I can actually just do this instead. Um, see if this will actually compile here. So we'll go ahead and run it. And yeah, so I, this is now compiled time memory copied um, version versus the copy forward, which is done at runtime when you don't know the actual lengths and stuff like that all at comp time. This is all comp. This is like really cool that Zig offers, but if they just go one more factor in providing you the exact memory that's on the stack um, and how much memory particular thing takes when you're using comp time for not memory, but just binary size that's, that's being expanded. I think that would be really, really cool there to see all this kind of like play out and happen. So anyways, that's all I'm going to say there. That is my stuff on Zig memory management stuff that you should be expecting to kind of learn. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any other tips or tricks or you want to complain about something, just leave them down in the comments.